G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for episode number 25 of our Cold Trozen Sky Shard Spellbreaker playthrough where uh, it's time to clean up a few of the homestead quests and then head up the coast or uh, I guess up the mountain up here up to uh, Fort Icon. Now normally I spend the first five to ten minutes of each episode uh, waffling about gear changes and whatnot and uh, we're not doing that today. We're just jumping straight in. So the first two things we need to do, one is to go into the ethereal mine, which, um, you know, it's a little bit risky, but uh, we do what we must for XP. So let's head on and in. Um, there is a lot of aether on the floor, obviously, but there's also a lot of aether crystals, which means we get lots of aether crystals, which is good because we're going to need lots of aether crystals because we have a lot of crafting to do. I do want to craft uh, another belt at some point. Um, I may wait for the level, I think it's 75 or 70 for the next belt, but um, I do want another belt, though I could go and poke my head into Port Valbury and um, kill, uh, what's his name? One of the, one of the um, big mech looking dudes. Watcher Egrad, I think it is. One of the Watchers, anyway. Um, could go in there and kill him. Uh, he drops a plus one Arcanist belt, which is my choice for belt slot. So, on any character I play, pretty much, I'm going to want uh, plus one skills from my belt, from my relic, from my helmet, eventually, and from my amulet, pretty much, as soon as I can get it. It's just a matter of uh, which of the belts is better. And then it's a m kind of a matter of, um, okay, the one from Watcher Egrad is, is better, but how much better is it? Because Port Valbury kind of sucks, and I don't really want to go in there. And if I can, I'd rather not. So, it really does depend on, on those things more than anything else. Um, let me go ahead and kill off the little one, and then we'll worry about Noveria Stormfire, who is still there. Okay, I think we got a Ethereal Essence on the floor is a good sign. Aether Crystal on the floor is also good. We got another blueprint, and maybe... Can you stop throwing fireballs at me? I'm trying to talk here. Um, maybe we got an upgrade here? We definitely did not. And uh, I'm not interested in that mace. Okay, so at the back of this little mine section here, there is also a um, a guaranteed dynamite. I was hoping he would do that charge just as I used the mirror, and then I would look super skillful when he slammed into me and did no damage. Unfortunately, uh, I timed it wrong and blocked his little aether wave. Which honestly is probably more damage anyway. So there's our guaranteed dynamite. We've got our, uh, what was it, the ethereal essence we were here for? Uh, it's time to leave. And I'm not walking out because there's a lot of death on the floor. So we're just going to take the rift back to the blood groove. Now the other thing I needed to do while we're here is the mill. We need to go clear the mill. Um, we need to clear this guy first. And Tab is not the map in this game. <laughs> Playing two RPGs at the same time does my head in. Okay. You'll see there Wayward Soul and Arcane Barrier both leveled up to rank 5. Phoenix Fire as well. I've been playing a little bit with the Phoenix Fire. Inspiration is the Bard's Harp. Um, the Phoenix Fire is... It's kind of meh. Um, the damage absorption is coming up. Um, I have confirmed that that is a, um, a, a reduction of all incoming damage. It's not just a shield for 43 damage and then it's done. Um, it reduces all damage by 43 um, after armor and such is applied. So... Um, 
that 43 is actually a lot better than it looks, but it's still not hugely better. And the fire damage and aether damage and burn damage on the uh, 5.4 second duration, that's kind of like an aura around you. So, I don't know. There may be something better we could do with those five, um, is it five? I think it's five points. So, we've got the Phoenix Fire. It does add another aura around us. I wonder if it hits and triggers, um, uh, like procs and things. It could actually be way better than I'm giving it credit for. But, um, at least on the surface it's not amazing. Okay, so we're at the mill now, just a bunch of Chthonians to kill. Let's go inside, watch as our meteors hit the roof. They did not hit the roof. Those ones did, but when when I was actually properly inside, the uh, they didn't hit the roof. Okay, we're done. Cool. So, uh, let's go ahead and turn those in. Um, Death's Vigil, they're going to send us to get the ashes. And then I will head back to town and talk to... I guess it's going to be Sergeant Sarive About the... Um, the mill. And then we're going to go on a lovely little walk up a mountain. And um, we'll end up at Fort Icon. So, Master Farouk, uh, da, 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 perhaps he will return one day. Where are we up to? We're honored. Is any of this any good? Rings and amulets. Don't we? I think we already have. Yeah, we're using Slith Venom. Poison and bleeding. Um, I could get away with losing one of those. I think it's probably not worth the time it would take to fiddle with it. So, I'm just going to leave it and... Um, worry about that sort of thing, um, augments that is, in one level, although I don't think we have revered with anyone yet. So we don't have the good stuff. We have revered with Homestead. We're getting close with the rovers. Black Legion is the uh, the one that I actually care about though. Um, we don't need to run, we're going back to Homestead. Uh, Black Legion has the two Augments that I usually use, uh, Mankind's Vigil, and, um, uh, what is the other one called? Hang on. I'll give you a good price on what I've got left. These two. Mankind's Vigil, King's Guard Powder. So this one's Pierce and Poison, and Mankind's Vigil is Aether and Chaos. And you can have one of these on every piece of your armor. So helmet, shoulders, gloves, boots, belt, pants, chest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven nines, last time I tried to do maths, was 63% to both Aether and Chaos, or some combination, uh, is pretty good. Okay, um, right, he's done, let's, uh, let's go for a run. Uh, now I normally skip this out, but I'm gonna leave it in this time, and, uh, just kinda show it. Um, typically I will cut this entire run out, and um, I will say something along the lines of, okay, I'm just going to run north, I'm not going to kill anything, it's going to be pretty boring, so I'm going to cut it out. And then I do. And um, I come back, it's like a minute and a half, and uh, I'm done. But you never actually get to see it, so I think I'll leave it in this time. And then you can all tell me whether you prefer it to be left in or cut out, because as I said, there's actually not a huge amount of, uh, of actually doing stuff. Because I don't kill anything, well, I kill some things. Like this little section here, I do like killing this little section. Because, uh... This guy's always here, Childred, and there's always Aether Clusters here. Which... I enjoy. That's a belt with a proc on it, and resistant as well. Okay, that belt could be very good. Doesn't have plus one Arcanist though. It's perfect, aside from no plus one Arcanist. 
this would, um, oh man, that would be perfect. Uh, it does let me know though that the, um, the higher level, uh, cold proc is on the table now. Which means I can replace my, uh, my three pieces that currently have that proc, and I'm going to be looking to do that as soon as possible. Okay, Hoon Conqueror is probably not anything I care about. Well, there you go. Um, that was something that happened on the road that I wasn't expecting, so kind of glad I left it in. Okay, we're halfway. Just pick up that rift gate. Um, now, I haven't been doing the uh, hidden path, so we're not going to be going to that point yet. I really wish it would let me do that, but unfortunately not. Um, another good thing about having so many pieces of equipment in this build that are rares is you can go shopping for them. Um, it's going to take a long time to get the affixes you want, but you can absolutely go to uh, Homestead and check the um, Isaiah Redden vendor, then run up the stairs and check the, um, the Homestead supplier vendor, and then Rift to Devil's Crossing and check the two vendors there, and then go back and the uh, Homestead vendors will, will have reset and just bounce back and forth, and you can find, um, I mean, eventually, it's not going to be you know, 20 seconds and you're done, but eventually you can find a lot of the stuff you need, with there being not so many MIs as well. Um, it's, it's both a blessing and a curse, because uh, you, there's no way you can go and just be like, oh, well, I have to kill chill main rages and they'll drop the, the weapon I want, or anything like that. Um, although our, our weapon is an MI. Um, but it does kind of free you up, because, I mean, this doesn't have to be Raider Pauldrons. It could be Ascendity Pullets. It could be, I don't know, something else. <laughs> I'm struggling to think of the name of some random shoulders. But uh, it doesn't have to be a specific type. Okay, we have reached the other side of the Astakhan Valley. I no longer care about the um, Devotion Shrines. Um, that one is a donate an item shrine from memory, so I'm just going to ignore it. It doesn't exist. It's dead to me. Okay, don't need a gun. So we're really just going to leg it for this episode. Um, we've got some content to smash through, and there's been enough waffling as it was already. So, drop a portal just here. Uh, that's the the um, passageway to... hang on a sec, did I even pick up the quest? I don't think I picked up the quest. I didn't pick up the quest, so I'll have to go back and get it um, after we get to Fort Icon. Which means I'm going to have to do a little bit of extra running because I don't want to clear my portal. Which is not ideal. So you can see this little fire swirly around me. That's the uh, the Phoenix proc. Which, I mean, the radius is not huge, so it's probably not amazing. But um, that little bit of absorption will help with tankiness. And like I said last episode, I've I've had several comments from uh, three or four people now, I think, have said something along the lines of, wow, this build is squishy. So we'll just kind of fix that a little bit. All right, soiled trousers. Who wants to throw poo at people? Um, for those of you who haven't seen these pants before, the previous owner seems to have left a little surprise in the seat of these trousers. And you can literally throw poo. Um, there are some... I mean, not good, but there are some builds that have been made around these pants, and they are amusing. Maybe not entirely effective, but definitely amusing. I mean, it's basically... Where is it? 
It's basically a really bad Dreg's evil eye. It even has the retaliation added to attack baked in. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny. Um, if you just put them on. Can I put them on? I can't put them on. I was going to show the, the graphic, but that's fine. I can't do it. I really wish I had grabbed this quest when I was here, so I didn't have to come back. Okay, we will go get your ashes. And now I'm wondering if it might not be quicker to port to Fort Icon and then run, versus running to the portal and then going to the uh, portal I already have. I think, well, we're already running, so I'm sure you can guess what my decision was, but I think this is the quicker way anyway. Right, let's head on in. Hand of Altos has reached rank 6. Very nice. So, Hand of Altos is uh, the proc that gives us a little bit of lightning zappy in between. It's kind of hard to show it, but um, it's linked to Shadow Strike and it does a little chain lightning animation which, uh, when it triggers anyway. So, one of the things in this place that was uh, very surprising to me when I first started playing Hardcore is you'll be walking through here and then all of a sudden you'd just be dead out of nowhere. And I think it's, uh, where are they? Maybe they're not on this floor. It's one of the yellow monsters, or uh, not monsters, the um, Blade Maidens. I think it's the Blade Maidens, anyway. That lightning strike, if you don't have your resistances sorted, that really, really hurts. So I had uh, another post on the reddits today about uh, someone saying, you know, I was getting one shot by this monster and, and can someone help have a look at my build and help out and it, it's always resistances. They really should, in this next patch, put a notice up at the login screen that just says, are you aware that not capping your resistances will brick your build? Because every single time I see someone saying, hey I'm feeling really squishy, can someone help? It's resistances every single time. Well, I don't think it's ever been something else. Actually, it probably has been armor once or twice. But it's almost always resistances. And this one from today had, like, had just finished uh, killing the Logorian on normal. He'd done it with zero fire resistances. Uh, I think like 18 cold resist, 0 lightning resist, um, I forget what his poison and or, um, pierce and bleed was, but his poison was quite low. Um, I think he had 40% chaos res, but it's just kind of like, you pick the three damage types that this boss does, and your resistances for all three of them add up to 40, and that's not 40 each, that's 40 total split between all three. And you're wondering why you feel squishy. Well, that's why. So, I don't know. There just needs to be maybe a better way of learning that um, resistances in this game are actually super important. I was wondering if he was going to die from our auras. Uh, speaking of... Not really speaking of auras, but uh, we're nearly done with Overload, so next level we'll put one point into that, and then I think we're actually done with Arcanist, promise this time, and we'll go back to um, Blade Spirit. Alright, let's see if we can uh, kill this guy and make it look easy. Maybe not going to make it look easy, but we should be able to kill him.
Righto. So if anyone's wondering, the basic idea with this build, for, at least for bosses, is you want to dodge their first attack, then uh, Shadow Strike in to hopefully get the Altos to proc. Um, it does say it's got 100%, but you do have to crit with it. So, um, I mean, chance to crit Bartholom is 8%, so it probably didn't go off. But um, once you get into melee range, you use the mirror to block his next big attack, and then um, haunt, and then start calling the meteors down. And that's basically the idea with all the bosses. And usually you'll get two meteors and he'll be halfway dead by the time you, um, by the time the mirror wears off. And then you can either run away and wait for the next big attack and dodge that with a, uh, with a shadow strike and do it again sort of thing, but with no mirror this time. Or you can just kite at that point. Okay, it will be done. Absolutely. What will be done? I don't remember. Alright, let's just junk all this stuff. Um, including the poo pants. Sadly, including this belt. That is actually a really nice belt. I, I wish that was on the, um, the Watcher of Igorad belt. May have to go and do Port Valbury just to get that belt. But I really don't want to. I hate Port Valbury. <laughs> it's probably my least favorite of the uh, key dungeons. I'm sure most people feel the same way. It's it's not a fun dungeon. There we go. Boss destroyed. The other thing you can do is just get into a pile of pile of monsters and just push the mirror. And then you can just kind of hang out and uh, let them not kill themselves, but they'll take a lot of damage just from existing in your presence. And that's always fun. Uh, Fortress, is that the one I'm thinking of? Plus one, two... Nope, that is not the one I was thinking of. I was thinking it was the uh, plus one Oathkeeper uh, relic, but I think the one, I think that one is actually for sale from one of the, um, actually all three of the witch cults. I think sell that one. Okay, so we're in here to kill Lucius, and uh, he died very, very easily on normal. On elite, it's not going to be quite so easy. Um, Aetheros is thirty percent over cap, so we're fine. If you don't have maxed Aether resistance by now. What are you doing? Um, but also, I mean, go get it. You have components. You have um, maybe not the reputation for all of the augments, but you have access to them. So if your resistances are not capped, you really should go and get them capped. At this point in the game, I mean, there really isn't an excuse to not have 80% in everything. I should actually do a, um, a video. Let me know in the comments, actually, if you're interested in something like this. Um, so the idea is basically uh, like how to fix your resistances at, at any level. And so I, what, I, what I was thinking is I would go through, okay, in Act 1, how do you fix your resistances? Well, it's, it's Act 1 normal. You, you don't fix your resistances. They don't matter. Um, anything is good but you, there's nothing that you have to have resistances for or you die. And then in Act 2, you want, like, Pierce and Bleeding. Well, how do you get Pierce and Bleeding at that point in the game? And then in Act 3, when you want Chaos and Aether for Homestead, well, how do you get that? And so that's kind of what I was thinking for a video. Um, let me know in the comments if that's something you would be interested in. Um, although I'm going to be honest, I'm probably going to do it anyway. <laughs> just because uh, it will help me as well as uh, a lot of other people. Alright, so we're going in to fight, uh, is it Lucius? I think it's Lucius. Yeah, Commander Lucius. 
Um, he has basically one attack that I care about. The rest are, you know, I'll dodge them. Um, but the one that matters is the Meteor. His Meteor is similar to ours, except it is Aether-based. If all of his Meteors hit you, you're dead. Um, if you have max resists, you might live. But um, the Meteors are not a joke on Elite. And since we don't have a Teleport, um, we actually have to run out of them. So those little balls, then he does his Flamethrower. Next up is going to be the Meteor. There it is. Now, if I had been standing there, I probably would have died. He still, um, he still went down pretty quickly, though. Uh, I expected him to put up more of a fight. Anyway, so that's Lucius. Um, do be aware that those meteors will shotgun you. Uh, you definitely don't want to eat all of them. Uh, same as with most bosses in this game, if you keep moving, you are much more likely to dodge things because you're already moving. Uh, if you're just trying to stand in one place and be a turret, you may find that uh, you take a lot more damage. Um, right, so this is Elite. So we don't have to worry about Loxmere yet. Which is good, because Loxmere is scary on a squishy build. And as much as I, bit, I did make a big song and dance about, you know, no more complaining about squishy build last episode, um, this is still a squishy build, let's be honest. So, keep to the left if you want to avoid Loxmere, although, like I said, this is not ultimate, so Loxmere doesn't exist. But I just generally do it out of habit. And I'm going to get up to the, um, the, is it Necropolis? How to Necropolis, I think, is the next rift gate. Um, and then I'm going to go back and wreck my homestead reputation by giving the Black Legion the supplies. If you want to, and I strongly advise against it, but if you want to, you can give Homestead the supplies, and then that will reduce your Black Legion re reputation and increase your Homestead reputation. Um, I very, very, very strongly advise against it, but you can do it if you so desire. Okay, um, I guess we could talk to Inquisitor Creed. I think this was the... oh no, that was the quest to kill Lucius. Okay. We're going to head to the Necropolis. We're already there, but that's fine. So this guy here, you can give them the supplies. You'll notice minus 250 for Homestead. You could go to Homestead and give them the supplies instead. You would get 750, Black, uh, 750 Homestead and minus 250 Black Legion. Um, I pretty much value Black Legion reputation over um, everything. There's, there's actually... It's, it's the most important reputation to me, just because of those augments. Right, um, secure the inner one, that's fine. I'll take the ashes back and uh, speak to Calderas. Eventually I'm going to clear that quest. I usually don't until ultimate, actually. <laughs> Alright, so Sarah's Bastion. We'll go back and give the Order of Death's Vigil the Ashes. I believe we then get to do uh, the the ring event, the um, the gauntlet, where we go in and they throw waves of undead at us. I believe that one's next. And then I'm going to stop. I don't usually do the ones after that. Let's do the ritual now. I will assist you in the ritual. I don't know why that does that. Sometimes I open doors in this game and the game thinks they're still shut. Um, let's go ahead and begin the ritual. Arcane barrier is increased in level, it's good. So 
Let's see here the inspiration. This is the Bard's Harp. This is Wayward Soul. So that is the Chariot of the Dead. There's the Bard's Harp again. It's not going to be 100% uptime, but it's going to be fairly close. Maybe somewhere between 100 and, and 50%. It's pretty good. Uh, that was reflective. So you'll notice I used the mirror there. I do not want to blow myself up with my own spells. Let's go ahead and not stand in the blue goo. Okay, I think that's everyone dead. So let's have a look at our loot. Not standing in the blue goo, as it were. Um, so that's a helmet with plus one to Nightblade, which is probably better than what we. Ah, it's probably not what we're better. Not better than what we're using actually. Um, yeah, I, I really need to get this exact helmet, but higher level would be ideal. You'll see the um, the cold the ice spike proc there is doing four and a half thousand. Whereas the level 71 that I found was doing six and a half or six, six and something. So we could have almost double on those if we had a higher level version. Um, the blue items are just not rolling for us this time. Um, let's actually see if there's anything here with ice spike procs. That's a gun. Um, we're not using it, but it's actually decent, honestly. Yeah, there we go, 6,204 for a level 70 ice spike. Now imagine you had three or four of those. It's going to be pretty good. Alright, uh, we are done with Death's Vigil until Ultimate. So, we're a decent ways off on it. We'll get Ultimate um, probably... Probably an Act 1 ultimate would be my guess. Uh, we do get reputation from killing Ethereals. We're not going to be killing a huge amount of Kamen's Chosen. So, probably Act 1 in, in ultimate. But, um, do also remember though that the Malmo expansion Ethereals don't count as Ethereals. They have their own faction, which can be quite confusing. Okay, Necropolis. Let's see, how are we doing for time? Half an hour. Alright, we might be able to finish Elite this episode, perhaps. We'll see how quickly we can get through this. I am going to go up there and get that totem, though. I've really been noting the lack of drops of pieces of the Eastern set. Although, to be fair, it wouldn't entirely be a bad thing to do a run of the game where you don't use any set items. Tyrant, Subsidian, War Cleaver of Alacrity is really good. Um, if you were doing a uh, Force Wave build, that would be a new weapon for you. Alright, how we do on loot? Probably nothing amazing. We got a purple. <laughs> the more of the damned. Okay, so this is a shield that shows up all the time. I see this thing very regularly, although it's usually the uh, the higher level version. What would you use this for? Vitality damage? I guess it'd be like a, um, a Vitcaster Conjurer or Cabalist, perhaps. Yeah, anyway. Um, cold stuff, no cold stuff. Alright, we just pick it up. And we are done here. Would be amusing to make a build with just nothing but gear procs. I think you, you'd probably want to do it with Aether, because the Aether missiles, I think, shoot three little missiles out per proc, which gives you three chances to proc another one instead of the cold ones, just do one. Uh, 
Um, I might do that one day. Well, not might. I've been saying I'm going to do it one day for a while now. Maybe once I get bored of PoE, I'll do the, uh, the live streams with silly meme builds like that. I wonder how far you could take it. Probably not very far. <laughs> Although, what's the damage on our, um, our Trozans is the equivalent of about six procs, so maybe. I don't think it would be terribly effective, um, and you would need some way to shred resistance, which means if you're doing Aether missiles, you're going to want the Widow, which means you need another attack, because you can't bind that to anything um, except an attack. What? Ow. All three of those meteors hit this wall and I cast it here. How does that work? I've been robbed. Alright, I think we're getting close to where we need to be. Yep. Kill the non-believer, he says, as he immediately turns to ice. Okay, here we go. So we've got a fight on our hands here. Oh, he's frozen, that's why. I will say I wasn't expecting to notice the increase in tankiness from taking those devotions, um, but I definitely did. Alright, uh, what are we doing? One point in Overload. I know I said I was going back to... No, no, we're going back to Nightblade. Yep, we're going back to Nightblade. And we're also putting more points into... Cunning? I think we do Cunning. At least a little bit. What are we up to? We're up to 37 minutes, so I'm actually going to end the episode here. So we will finish the Blood Wagons and the Leviathan, or the um, Ligorian, sorry, next episode. So thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye for now.